are you? Hi everybody, I'm Yalda. My name is Yalda Safai and I'm a Sportwood student. I'm going to be your YouTube guide. So this is an interesting question. It actually came from one of our instructors. So she came across a problem. She, was actually, she actually asked, she was playing with some questions. It said something like, if you had one circle, obviously the circle just hangs out by itself. If you have two circles, what's the maximum number of points they can intersect at? And after playing with this for a while, she thought there were two. And that's totally right. Then the question kind of blew up and said, well, what happens if you took three circles? What's the maximum number of points they can intersect at? Let well, me rephrase that. What is the maximum number of points that all three circles could have in common? Okay. Well, if all three circles have points in common, that means any pair of the three must also have those points in common. And if you play with this long enough, you would see that two points intersections is the most you can have for two circles. So two points of intersection is the most you can have for three circles. So to give you a visual example, this is one possible solution. These two guys obviously intersect here and here. Sorry, the circle's a little bit off. And then you can have another circle that comes in and intersects there. So this point would belong to all three circles, so would this point. So definitely two is possible. Okay? And you can see from this argument, while well, playing with this picture, you can't get more than two. But what my instructor wanted was, she wanted a more mathy way to do this. Not, not necessarily proof or anything like that, but she wanted some sort of general way to think about this. So this is a little bit extra. If I actually saw this, for example, in the GRE, not that likely, but if I did, I would just play with it and see, oh, two points here. If I have three guys sharing a point in common, then any two of them must share a point in common. You max out at two, so I've got the answers to. Okay. However, let's show that. Let's show for any number of circles, the maximum number of points that all of those circles could share is two. Backwards. So maybe an easy problem, but we're just going to think about intuitively how to work on this. So the point is, if you already believe that the maximum number of points any number of circles can share in common is two, what does that mean? That means that if you get, there's no way to get more than two, right? So for example, if I have three points, the idea is I can never create two circles that share the same three points. But how is that possible? What's in common? So another way of saying that is, if you have three points, they must pretty much define a specific circle, right? Because if it's true that these guys are circle, that's true, and any, so, any other guy that I make pass through these three points must be the same circle. Because if it weren't, then you would literally have, by definition, two circles passing through the same three points, sharing them in common. But the maximum we know is two. Okay? So let's show that. So kind of intuitively, if you play with this picture, you can kind of see, like, if you have three points in a circle, you know by definition every circle has to have a center. So, and that center is equidistant from all these guys. I mean, that's the definition of a circle, right? It's a set of points the same distance from the center point. Okay. So I guess that means, like, you can kind of see, if you pick three points in space, there seems to be only one magical number, right, where everybody is the same distance away from that. Okay? So that's our building intuition. And in fact, let's work at it that way. Okay? And let's see why for two points. Well, let's do the start like this. So my feeling is for two points. We saw it here. You can get multiple circles, right? But remember the definition. So to be a circle, you pick a center. And the definition of circle is it's the set of all those points, right, for which the distance from these points to this center point happens to be the same length. We call that the radius, right? So what we need is, if this sits on a circle, then it has to have a center, right? And wherever that center is, that center has to be the same distance from both of these points. So without doing any real math, let me just get a fix on this. Let's first draw a line between these two guys. Okay? Nothing's, nothing hard about that. Let's also draw like a guy that splits. So take this length from here to here, this little section here. Literally split him in half like this. Okay? So here's my argument. One, do you guys agree? Since we split him in half, if you're here, the distance here is the same as the distance there. Okay. Two, anybody on this line is also going to be this a possible center. Because if I pick this guy, do you see whatever this distance is, you can visually see that this guy is also the same distance. I mean, you can prove it with right triangles, but without doing a formal proof, that's pretty believable, right? Okay. And you can also see anybody we pick down here, any point down here, this two would be the same as that. So literally, you could have a circle here with this radius, or you could have a circle passing through this point with this radius, which would be a bigger radius. Okay. Okay, so I don't like this picture to get too visually confusing, but does everybody agree that as long as you are on this line, you're going to be equidistant from these two points? 
So this could serve as a center. So could this, so could this, so could this, so could this. OK, now I'm going to show that these are the only candidates. Because imagine, again, just trying to be really simple. If you're not on this line, you've got two options. You can be to the right of it, or you can be to the left. So and it's going to work the same argument in either case. So let's work with this one. So imagine you're over here. If you're over here, you can see that whatever distance you are from this guy, right? Let's just call that a distance. Let me clean this up a little bit. So there's my dividing line in half. You can visually see that whatever this distance is, this guy over here would be a greater distance, right? So there's no way that this could be a center of a circle because he wouldn't be the same distance from here to here. I mean, it could be the center of some circle, but not the circle passing through both of these points, right? Because if this guy were the center, this distance should be the same as that. You can visually see there's no way that can happen. Now you can prove that, but without doing the proof, it's pretty easy to see. To the right of this line, closer to this guy. To the left of this line, closer to this guy. Do you guys agree? OK, so nothing heavy going on there. So now let's put these facts together. So what we have is this. If you have any two points, right, pick the spot halfway in there, the middle point. Draw this perpendicular over here. You can totally see that any point on here can serve as the center for a circle. OK, so you have infinitely many circles Right? Sitting here with, the set, with their centers on these lines, on this line, sorry, passing you through these two points. Okay, so no big deal. But then, what about the issue of three? Why does three define the circle? Because if I pick any other point anywhere, so just say randomly here, okay? I can also connect these two lines. So ignore this picture for the moment. Do you agree that if these two lines stand on the same circle, then just by the same reasoning we had, ooh, that was horrible. You can find some middle point here and here, right? And this could serve as a circle, the center of a circle, passing through these two points. So could this, so could this, just like we reasoned before, right? So now let's see what happens. If these two guys are on a circle, its center must be on this line. If these two guys are on a circle, its center must be on this line. So for all three of these guys to be on the same circle, their center must be on this line and this line. Oh, this point must be the center for a circle with these two points. And if it's doing it all at once, it has to be on both. So, so therefore, you have a unique center. And if you have a unique center and a fixed distance, you have a unique circle. So, there's, so three points define a circle. So the maximum number of points of intersection for different circles has to be two. Right? So no big deal. So everybody, please comment on our videos. It's very important in improving them. See you guys later.